Welcome, it's Lauren from Noteful.com. This week, for our review video, I'm gonna be doing something incredibly new and something that's very unique from anything that we've ever done before on this channel and in this particular series. What I'm going to be doing is actually reviewing a couple of reading questions today. Some students have a test coming up this week and I know a lot of you out there are struggling with the reading section as well. So for those of you who submitted to the forum, we really thank you and we can't wait to look at your work, but we're gonna save some of that work for next week. This week, I'm gonna focus a little bit on reading, so I hope it's really beneficial to you. So let's take a look at the reading for this week. So for this week, the topic I wanted to focus on specifically was vocabulary. This is something that is often discussed in our tutoring sessions again through email and everywhere. The question that came in this week essentially was, should I spend a lot of time on vocabulary questions? A lot of students ask about this. Some passages you're going to find four, sometimes even five vocabulary questions. That's a lot, right? So if we're just kind of rushing through them based off of whether we know the word or don't know the word, we could run into a lot of difficulty. We could lose five points easily if we're not focusing and paying a little bit of attention with some of these questions. Now, the questions I'm gonna be focusing on today come directly from the TOEFL. All right, we're gonna be focusing on only three questions, all vocabulary, and we're gonna be using a lot of good tips and tactics that you can use when you have your test coming up this Saturday or any time in the future. So let's start with this first question. Now, for your reference, you might wanna know that this is a passage about fish. In particular, it's about bluegill fish. Now, it discusses their breeding habits um, and mating habits and the way that they make more bluegill fish, right? So the vocabulary words are gonna be related to that on some level. So that might give you a little bit of context. Now. What do we do if we don't have any more context? We're just jumping right into the passage. We haven't read the entire thing. We just see number one, question number one, is a vocabulary question. So the first thing we're going to do, of course, is read the sentence that is included here, the prompt uh, for this question. It says, the word depression in the passage is closest in meaning to. Okay, so the first thing that you wanna do, regardless of whether you know the word or not, is actually just go straight back to the passage. The passage itself actually says, territorial males build these nests by sweeping out a bowl-shaped depression in the gravelly bottom. Okay, so we have a little bit of context here. So first we know territorial males, we don't really know what the context is there yet, but we do know we're learning about how they build nests, right? And if we know anything about a nest, um, we know that birds use them, other animals use them, reptiles use them. So there's some contextual knowledge that I'm using about nests in general. Okay, so I kind of have a visual in my mind of what that looks like. Um, the fish, they sweep out a bowl-shaped depression, right? That's a really great thing to use here. We have an adjective right, an adjective that comes directly before depression. And for those of you who know what a bowl is, right, you should also be able to visualize that. Here's a picture for your reference, right? And when you think of a bowl, you can see the bottom of it, right? It's something that you could just look straight down into. And you just generally know what that looks like. So now that we have a visual of this sort of nest, this space that the the male is building, uh, we can kind of guess what depression means. So let's always look at all of the answer choices. A is package. Now, package. Does that really ring a bell? Does that make a lot of sense here when we think about bowl shape? It doesn't really. I'm still going to hold on to it just in case. So let's take a look at B. We see entrance. Okay, this sounds pretty good, but again, remember what an entrance is. An entrance is an opening that goes into another area, right? The entrance itself is just kind of like this shape, right? So we're not quite sure there yet. The next thing is hidden location, all right? See hidden location. So this now, hidden location, when you look inside of a bowl, 
Can you see everything? Or are there some areas that are hidden? I think we would all agree that there's no places that are hidden, right? So we can discard this one. Now D, hollow place. A lot of students who don't know the meaning of the word hollow may be thrown off by this. But just keep in mind that hollow, like a bowl, is something that is carved out. And also just through the process of elimination, package, we know what that means. It doesn't really make sense. And the others that we've already examined, they don't really make sense either especially when we compare that visual, right? So use the contextual knowledge, use the visual, and that will also help you select the right answer. So let's take a question number two. The word taxes in the passage is closest in meaning to. A lot of people know what taxes are, right? But we want to be careful because one of the things the TOEFL will do to trick you is use second meanings or um, alternate meanings. We may all be familiar with definition A, but we may not be familiar with, with definition B. So you have to be careful uh, because sometimes they're going to do that to trick us. Now, I first want to start with the actual sentence where the vocabulary words, word is, and you'll see it's at the bottom. It says, this is a task of constant vigilance, and it probably taxes the male considerably. Okay it doesn't really contain very much, right? We have a pronoun. It says this is a task, okay? And if we don't know what the meaning of constant vigilance is, I think we probably know constant, right? Always, 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 something that is continuously happening. But if we don't know vigilance, what are we gonna do? Well, we have to also take a look at what this pronoun represents. So let's just take a look at the previous sentence really quickly. It's a long one, but we'll get through it. So females are attracted to the nests for spawning because the male owners provide egg guarding services. Okay, so the tasks here we're talking about, we're talking about verbs, right? A task has to be some kind of a verb, something that is an action. Um, so females are attracted to, that's not really a task. Male owners provide egg guarding services, that is a task, right? That's something they're doing. Um, and then it elaborates a little bit. It says they chase off predators, they fan the eggs, they provide this protection. Uh, so constant vigilance, right? So we can sort of assume that constant vigilance means caring for something or watching something, all right? And in this case, it would be the males caring for the babies, right, the eggs. So now that we have a sense of constant vigilance and how this sort of affects the male, Right, what these exer or these activities are, um, we can go ahead and take a look at the answer choices. So we see that A is strains. Now, UE may know that this means tires, right? Puts a lot of strain on, puts a lot of pressure on. That sounds pretty good, but we're going to keep going. B, harms. Well, when you're protecting against predators, that can be harmful, but there's nothing in the sentence that implies harm or danger, right? So we're going to want to move on. C, disturbs. Well, we know that disturbs is kind of like annoy. Now, I don't think this we can say that the males are bothered, right? Because this is something that they're doing on their own, right? Um, so we'll keep going anyway. D, discourages. Okay, discourages means, well, if we have courage to do something, I don't have courage to do something. This means discourage. Well, they seem pretty courageous. They seem like they're ready and uh, motivated to go ahead and do all of these things, maybe in order to track the females, right? So from this, we can see that A is probably the best solution here. Strains, puts pressure on, right? Makes you a little bit tired. It's a lot of effort, okay? We can kind of assume that based off of what we read. So finally, we have this word hover. The word hover in the passage is closest in meaning to, okay? Again, we're going to go to the passage. Here it says, satellites, as their name suggests, hover above the colony. Okay, so we have satellites. Uh, we don't really know what that means in relationship to fish. Perhaps we can assume that's the name of a fish because um, they're saying, as their name suggests. Okay, so the word hover is being used as a verb here, right? Satellites hover above the colony. Okay, so we already have a visual in our head. Hover, okay, we have above, 
that's a preposition. We know what that means. Uh, colony, we maybe don't need to know the meaning of this word, but I think we know or understand that in terms of fish, it means the group, right? The colony of fish. Now, another thing you can use here is again, the contextual clue of satellite. For those of you who already know what a satellite is, right? When you think about in outer space, we do see satellites, right? Or we don't see them, but they are there. They are there, right? So we can tell that a satellite is something that hovers above the earth, right? So if you have that visual in your mind, you can then go to the answer choices, right? A says live. This doesn't really seem to make any sense, right? Of course, they, they maybe live above, but that doesn't really capture the meaning we see here with satellite based off the this visual that we're looking at. The word or the next one would be hide. Okay, so hide, I don't think that that would make sense, right? We can toss that one out immediately. Next, C, float. Okay, if we know the meaning of float, we know they're in water, right? That's a good word, right? And when you float above something, there's a visual that looks kind of similar to what we're seeing here with satellite. Now, D, rush, mm, I don't think so, right? That's not something that a satellite does, okay? So we can immediately throw this one out as well. So the answer choice, that's correct, is float. Okay, so for next week, we're going to be returning to our usual review video where students' work is reviewed that was submitted to the forum. So I hope nobody's angry. I hope that everybody really benefited from this video, um, even though we didn't talk about the essays, the great work that was submitted this week. Um, on the forum itself. But for next week, if you want to participate, there should be a question up by tomorrow where we will also review that work. Um, you're going to go to the forum, which is going to be linked here. And again, if you really like this video, please put a thumbs up, click like, and also subscribe so that you can watch these videos every week uh, until you are ready to pass your TOEFL. Good luck.